Hello everyone, welcome to the Binge on Salvaf podcast. My name is Anna, but you can call me Anji. And thank you all so much for being here today, for joining me. I hope you are all doing really well. As you can tell by the title of this episode, today I am coming at you with a little special episode. Or should I say with two episodes, actually. That's because I've recently turned 30, which means I've done a lot of reflection on my life. I've done a lot of reflection on what those 30 years of my life have been like so far. And I wanted to remind myself of some of the things that I'm really grateful for, because I often choose to focus on what's bad, what's wrong, what I fucked up, what I promised myself that I'll do, but I never did. And just in general on all these negative things. So I wanted to do a two-part episode where I would reflect on 15 things that I've failed at and on 15 things that I've nailed or that I'm grateful for or that I feel like I've kind of accomplished so far. In today's episode, I'm going to share 15 things that I feel like I've failed at during my 30 years of life so far. And in the next episode, I will share 15 things that I feel like I've nailed, which sounds super cocky, but I'm gonna leave it at that. Hi there, my name is Anna, but you can call me Anchi, and I'm a host of the Binge on self podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome and thank you so much for being here. And if you've tuned in before, it's great to have you back. Binge on Salvaf podcast started with me in my bedroom, recording and sharing my journey with binge eating disorder and with procrastination. But we are so much more than our eating disorder and we are so much more than our problems. So this podcast is essentially about accepting yourself and everything that comes with it. Growth, pain, relationships, boundaries, habits, comparison, body image, confidence, you name it. Plus, you'll catch me having some insightful conversations with fantastic guests who open up and share their stories. So make sure to subscribe to The Binge on Salvaf on your favorite platform and join me every Tuesday for a brand new episode. Binge on Salvaf podcast is intended for informational purposes only. It doesn't provide professional medical advice and it is not a substitute for diagnosis or treatment. For some strange reason, I feel like coming up with things that I either fucked up or I don't like about myself or I hate about myself are so much easier for me to come up with than coming up with things that I like about myself or that I feel like I achieved in my life. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one, but how sad is that that we cannot kind of see our achievement as something we should be proud of. Anyway, I'm moving way too far ahead of myself, so let's move to the things that I feel like I failed until now. Number one is beating procrastination. Procrastination is something I really, really, really struggle with in my personal life and I've been struggling with forever. And what I'm probably the most angry about is that I let my procrastination habit take a lot of opportunities from me. I let it make a lot of things incomparably more difficult just because I don't work on something early on or at all. If I should pick just one trait that I hate about myself and that I really, really wish I could change, it would be procrastination. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not like I am not trying to do anything about it and I just accept it as it is, but it's honestly kind of exhausting because you are battling yourself all the time, so it's a battle between me and myself all the freaking time. But on the other hand, people, of course, deal with much worse, so I'm not complaining. But procrastination is something that I really struggle with. And I have been struggling until the age of 30 and I will probably struggle with 
one thing that I regret about procrastination is that I let my procrastination habit take away so much of my life. And I often realize that I've just wasted hours watching YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or some stupid TV show that I don't necessarily even enjoy and I didn't plan on watching that or doing that, but I just did it to avoid the negative emotions that I feel towards something that I should be doing instead. So anyway, that's my point number one and I really hope to get better at not procrastinating in the future and in the upcoming years because I don't want to lose even more of my time and of my life. Number two is achieving some of my long-term goals. This directly links to my procrastination problems. I dare to say that I am a pretty ambitious person, but because I procrastinate so much, I end up giving up on most of my dreams and goals because I feel like there's no way I'm gonna achieve them. To be honest, not many things feel as defeating as knowing that you didn't achieve your goals, not because of something or someone, but because of yourself and because of you standing in your own way. Maybe it sounds harsh, but I want to be honest and this is how it is for me. If I go way back into my life, I didn't get to a high school where I wanted to go because of my procrastination. And I struggled so much with finishing my master's degree because of my procrastination. And I never really learned how to speak French because of my procrastination. And a few years ago, I wasn't even able to finish a single book because of my procrastination. And oftentimes, even with this podcast, I think it has some potential, but I ruin any chances for its success by procrastinating on it. So it's embarrassing, I know, and it's something that I'm not proud of. I definitely know it is something I need to work on. My third and final point that is still tightly related to the procrastination habit is that procrastination kind of taught me to postpone life for some other day in the future when I no longer procrastinate, when I'm fully happy and content with myself. Simply postpone life for future when things are different and when things are better. At least that's what I kind of came to believe in my mind. What it means in practice is that I kind of thought myself to choose staying at home instead of just doing anything meaningful rather than going out and experiencing life and experiencing anything with the people that I love. I taught myself to stay at home rather than travel. I taught myself to stay at home rather than attend an event, a workshop, class, whatever it may be. I taught myself to skip a workout because tomorrow sounds like a much better day to start going to the gym. It probably makes no sense, but somehow I've simply thought myself to postpone not only things that I need to do, but also things that I would love to do. In my mind, I'm often like, yeah, one day I'm gonna do that. One day I'm gonna visit that place. One day I'm gonna go to that restaurant. What I forget to realize is that time's passing by and I keep choosing comfort and the comfort of my home instead of doing something that could give me some experience, that could make me a better person. And I choose that comfort pretty much every single day, every single time. And what may happen is that one day, if I'm lucky, I wake up and I will be 70 years old and I will realize that I haven't lived my life the way I wanted to. And I just kind of made it through, if that makes sense. Number four is not showing more gratitude. Not just towards myself, but also towards other people. Somehow over time, I got really bad at expressing how grateful I am for something or for someone being in my life. And I wish I kind of let people know a bit more in certain situations in the past how much I love them and how grateful I am for them. And I also suck at showing gratitude towards myself and towards what I have and what... I do and I am often not really grateful for the body I have, for the mind I have, for the life that I get to live. So 
I think this is something that I really, really need to work on because I see gratitude as something that helps to keep you humble and grounded and you don't want to live your life being ungrateful. Number five is having negative first approach. Again, it's something that I'm not proud of. Some people are optimistic and they look at things from optimistic perspective. Some people tend to see things more realistic. And then there's me who always sees things in a really negative way. I see obstacles before I see an opportunity. I focus on what went wrong instead of what went right. I see all the things I fucked up rather than the things I've either accomplished or at least I've tried to accomplish. What I don't like about having a negative mindset is that not only do I make my life a lot harder for myself by focusing on the negative stuff, but I also tend to ruin other people's happiness and other people's joy because I criticize things more, I criticize people more. And I worry way too much about things that I don't really need to worry about. Last but not least, it's also not a really happy way to live your life if you only focus on the negative side of things. Number six is overthinking. I'm probably one of the biggest overthinkers there are. I overthink anything. I create scenarios in my mind that there's like zero chance that would ever happen. And I create these scenarios only to stress myself even more. In practice, overthinking often stops me from enjoying a lot of things, from creating positive experience, positive memories, because I always overthink everything. For example, when I'm supposed to go to an event, I come up with different scenarios on how I'm going to embarrass myself and how I'm not going to have anyone to talk to, how I'm going to feel like I don't belong there. All these things eventually either stop me from going there or they stop me from enjoying where I'm at. Sometimes overthinking can be a good thing because it really gets you to think things through. But most of the times, honestly, it's useless and it's just more hurtful than helpful. I'm capable of overthinking what I'm going to cook for lunch to an extent that I end up frustrated with myself and not cooking or eating anything at all. So that's just to explain how I fail at not overthinking things. Thing number seven I failed at is standing up for myself. And I mean standing up for myself in many different ways. I cannot stand up for myself when someone offends me. For example, this week some random guy grabbed my butt on the subway subway escalator. And the only thing I managed to do was to turn around, look at him, and he mumbled something. So I turned back and that was it. I didn't say anything, I didn't do anything and it always leaves me so frustrated with myself because I didn't stand up for myself and I didn't say anything like I could say like fuck off or what the hell do you think you're doing or something like that but I said nothing. Other times I let people talk me out of my decisions or of the values that I stand for because I get very easily convinced that there's something wrong with me. I also suck at standing up for myself in front of other people. I let other people's narratives about me disrupt my reality. I let other people's opinions get to me. And it sucks because then I always end up being a people pleaser, doing things to get validation from others, and I never really stand up for myself. Think number eight that I failed at is talking about myself in a positive way. I think it probably has a lot to do with my negative outlook on a lot of things as well as with my non-existent confidence. But to be fair, I am my biggest critic and I tend to belittle myself, belittle my achievements and belittle everything I've ever done. I don't think that being overly self-centered and cocky is a good way either, but it would be really nice to find some healthy balance between being so insecure and being confident in yourself. I have to say that my belittling approach is kind of unbearable, not just for me, but also for people around me, because 
you don't constantly want to reassure someone that they are not as bad as they think they are and you don't want to constantly convince your friend that maybe they achieved something because they really deserved it, not because of pure luck and because they are just stupid or whatever. So I kind of promised myself a few years ago that I really want to talk to myself and about myself in more positive way. I don't want to call myself mean names. I don't want to tell myself things like I look disgusting, I'm so stupid, I'm worthless, etc. Because it's not a healthy nor sustainable mindset. So I am trying to work on that for a while. Sometimes I do better, sometimes I don't. So I've done some progress, but it's definitely a long journey. Thing number nine that I failed at is confidence. This point probably comes as no surprise following up on what I've just said, but I have struggled with low confidence and with being overly shy my entire life ever since I was like in a kindergarten, I think. And I still hope that it will change one day, but I honestly feel like it's just getting worse the older I get, which is really weird. The less confident I feel, the more I tend to kind of shut myself off from discomfort, from going out, from experiencing anything I don't feel comfortable with. So I don't know if I'll ever become a confident person. It would be really nice, but I don't know. Number 10 is not taking accountability for my actions. I feel like often like certain things were happening to me instead of seeing that it's not as much about those things happening to me but me letting those things happen by not taking any action or by not taking any accountability for either my action or my inaction. This is going to be a really stupid example but I cannot really think of anything else right now. Like I've mentioned, I didn't get accepted to a high school or university that I wanted. And in my mind, I thought the universe is against me and I'm so unlucky and pity me. And I felt like everything bad is happening to me. But the reality was that I didn't study enough. I didn't prepare myself enough. So of course I wouldn't get accepted. I kind of failed to realize that usually things don't happen just because you wish for them. Sometimes sometimes they do, but that's not really something you can rely on. But they happen because you work for them. And I've had this attitude for a really long time. And until this day, I sometimes automatically assume that I'm the victim in some situation, when in reality, it's me who got myself in that situation, if that makes sense. For a long time, I felt like I am at this point in life as a result of all these wrongdoings that happened to me. But in reality, it was mostly because I didn't take any action to change that situation or to prevent any situation from happening, if that makes sense. Number 11 is consuming too much and not creating or learning enough. This probably sounds weird and super 21st century millennial life, but I often catch myself feeling really, really empty when I spend too much time consuming content, whether that's social media, YouTube, movies, TV shows, music or whatever. And I feel like that when I don't spend any time creating something, some value in my life. I've noticed that I tend to feel much better when I spend time creating something or learning something, whether that's creating a podcast, writing an article, or learning English, or just anything rather than consuming content that's been created by someone else. Number 12 is spending too much money on things that have no real meaning. I've done an entire episode on my relationship with money. I will link it in the show notes so you can listen to it. In that episode, I basically talked about how I've spent so much money on food and on things that I believed will make me feel better about myself, like clothes and makeup, but they never did make me feel better. One thing that I'm still kind of learning myself and working on is that it makes more sense to spend money on things that are going to bring me a long-term pleasure rather than the short-term pleasure. And what I mean is that I can spend $500 on clothes that I don't need, hoping it would make me feel better, 
but isn't it better to spend it on something that will be more useful like using that money for my future mortgage or using that money for traveling it doesn't mean i can't use that money for anything short term but it means to kind of think about what is the value that it's bringing me into my life if that makes sense lesson number 13 that i failed to learn is that i need to start now not on some specific date in the future I'm guilty of this like so many other people, but I often tend to promise myself that I'm gonna start doing something or stop doing something on some specific day in the future, like on Monday next week or on Monday next month or next year or on January 1st. And I think it's such a stupid thing because it only comes to show that you don't really want to do that. You only want to postpone it and then you most likely fail to do it anyway. So what I'm trying to teach myself now is, okay, so you want to stop doing XYZ. Fine, you're starting right now. And I feel like it is so much more effective when you start right now because you're taking on the chance right away, not sometime in the future, which would give you so much time to talk yourself out of it. A really stupid example might be that I promised myself that every night when I go to sleep, I will clean my kitchen and leave the kitchen clean for the next morning. So there's no dishes or anything. And instead of being like, okay, so I'm gonna start next week, I did it right away I did it on that day and it kind of helped me to really start doing it and keep it because I was not postponing that for some future time number 14 is I give up way too soon one of the things I suck at continuously is that I give up too soon on anything I ever try whenever I start something new whenever I want to learn something whenever I decide for anything I try I tried like once or twice and then I give up because I suck at it, which is obviously normal. And I think like, I'm not getting any better than this. I feel stupid. I quit. Maybe it's because I'm afraid of failing. Maybe it's because I am way too impatient. Maybe it's a combination of both, but I need to kind of build more perseverance, I think. And my last and final thing, number 15, is something that I chose on purpose to lighten the episode because I think it's kind of funny. And that's not attending Ariana Grande concert when she was in Prague. Now, before you turn off the episode with a disappointment, I want to say that I'm a huge fan of Ariana Grande. She is my most favorite singer probably ever. And one thing that I really regret until this day is that in 2019, when she was performing in Prague as part of her Sweetener World Tour, I was so stupid for not going to that concert. It's not like I couldn't afford the tickets or I wouldn't get there or whatever. I was just really stupid and I somehow talked myself out of it, like, I'm gonna go the next time, like, which was very stupid, because who knows if she's ever going to perform here, and I missed one of her best eras so far, so I thought it could be a great way how to end this episode on a lighter note. Yeah, so these were 15 things that I feel like I failed at in life so far, There are obviously tons and tons of more. Some of them I cannot even share with you. So I try to choose some of the things that I feel like are really important for me to work on or I just thought would be really nice to share. So thank you so much for listening. Next time I will share 15 things that I feel like I've nailed, which will be really interesting because I still don't know what those things will be. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to subscribe to the Bench on Silva podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or YouTube. I'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, take care and talk to you soon. Thank you.